How about some more Seattle migration to Dallas? Well, more. More talk about it anyway. Mike Fisher reporting from Frisco, home of the Dallas Cowboys, here in the fishbowl. We've told you about KJ Wright. Uh, as I speak to you at this moment, this uh, is ongoing, this situation. KJ Wright, uh, a decade of excellence in Seattle, now interested in coming to the Cowboys. And yes, the Cowboys um, reciprocate at some level in that interest. How about Jaron Reed? Reed from Seattle. I got asked about this so much by smart Cowboy fans that I decided to ask smart Cowboys executives. And we've got the exclusive, exclusive for you. Immediately after the Seahawks cut loose Reed on Friday, the Cowboys began exploring the idea of chasing the six foot three, 300 pound playmaking defensive tackle, a source tells me. Now, we're not in the business of saying the Cowboys are getting Reed. That, that's not what we do here. Uh, you know that. Uh, it's straight facts, straight dope, no bullsh. And so I'm not going to play this into something that it's not. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, as it's been explained to me. It's an exploration. Where will the exploration go uh, in the Department of Fit and Finance, which is always an important department, fit and finance. There's little issue with the first, fit, and some great obstacles with the second, finance. Thank you for subscribing to what we do here. I've got a bunch of people who have commented now uh, as we are approaching, what are we at? 26,000 people? We're giving away stuff pretty soon. Um, who say, oh, Fish, I, I, I'm with you. I come watch your videos and hang out with you three times a day. Everything's great. I never even knew about the subscribe button. Hit the button. Subscribe and alerts. Tells you you're in the club and tells your phone, I guess. Go get in the club. There's something going on in there. So subscribe and alerts, please. Dallas happens to already be considering another ex Seahawk stalwart. He's ex for now anyway, as he's a free agent in linebacker KJ Wright. You know about that story. If you don't, you know where to find it here. Dallas certainly has the need for an accomplished defensive tackle who can eat up space. 6'3", 306 or so, Reed, but also get to the quarterback. Now, he did that in a good way in 2020 with six and a half sacks. Now, some people up there said, well, that was because other people were taking up blocks and he was benefiting. Dude, that's the way it works. That's, that's, that's how, how, how do you think one guy gets 20 sacks? You think it's all by himself? How do you think Michael Strahan got sacks? How do you think Lawrence Taylor got sacks? How do you think Reggie White got sacks? It, it was a matter of teamwork. So. He got six and a half sacks last year, even though he's a space eater too. And in 2018, he recorded 10 and a half sacks. This is an interior defensive lineman with 10 and a half sacks, which led to the new big contract that has now become an albatross uh, for Seattle and maybe going forward a little bit for him and maybe an albatross in, in Reed's mind that the Cowboys don't want to deal with. But again, we'll get there in a moment. The Cowboys' present front runners at this spot are Tristan Hill and Neville Gallimore. And let's be frank, they can only hope to be as accomplished someday as what Reed at 28 already is. Hope that happens for Tristan. Hope that happens for Neville Gallimore. Um, but that would be a very difficult progress. Uh, uh, prognostication that, that, that would be I challenge you to say that someday Tristan Hill is gonna get ten and a half sacks in a year this guy's done it Dallas gonna use a 4-3 system as you know that already works for Reed Dan Quinn Seahawks coordinator from 2013 to 20 and 2014 now runs the Cowboys on that side of the ball 
And Quinn, of course, was once mentored by head coach Pete Carroll. Inside information there. Quinn was also once mentored, who, who hasn't been, I guess, by Nick Saban. Guess where Reed played college football? Alabama. Uh, by the way, you want to find an interesting video on Dan Quinn. We've got a bunch of them, including a uh, conversation with him. And then Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin talking about Dan Quinn. Go find that video here on the Fish Sports channel. One NFL scout um, through channels tells us that Reed is more of a flash player now. That he's not dominating on every down like he did in 2018. Can he recapture that? At 28, you'd think he'd still be capable of that. It's not like he's out of gas. But more flash than great but still good. And that greatness thing, or a slight lack thereof, is what became an issue this week in Seattle regarding his contract. Reed was entering the last season of a two-year contract signed last March that carried a almost $14 million cap hit for 2021. Seattle goes to him and says, we want to move that money. And he says, no, no, I want an extension. We'll move some money, all right. I'll save you cap room, giving him an extent. I want an extension. Seattle said no, tried to trade him. Why were there no takers? Well, unable to disagree, unable to agree on the extension. Seattle then put him on the trade market and was unable to find a buyer there. I'm assuming, by the way, I don't know this. I'm going to assume that the Seattle called the Cowboys about a trade. Cowboys said, no, maybe we'll wait. And waiting time is here. No one wanted to take on his $8.9 million salary cap hit. That's why they couldn't be traded. If you're just talking about talent, oh, I'll, I'll trade for him. But I, I don't want to take on the $8.9 million salary cap hit. And oh, by the way, he wants an extension? Well, then he's going to want an extension here. And then we're going to have a disgruntled guy playing on a one-year contract. Don't want that. Oh, by the way, regarding me drinking coffee in the morning and something else in the evening, um, I've had a couple comments on this. And, um, again, 26,000 people apparently understand. I'm not in my mom's basement in San Diego. I'm not in a big fancy studio with uh, some fake background, but with like fake downtown Dallas behind me. Not that there's anything wrong with that. That's great. This is really me, <clears throat> really on Sunday morning, easy like Sunday morning, easy like Sunday morning, whoa, cause I'm easy. And um, I'm, I haven't had breakfast yet. I've written four stories that you can find on CowboysSI.com, DallasBasketball.com, Inside the Rangers.com. I mean, we're all over it. And now I'm finding time to hang out with you and drinking my somewhere between first and fifth cup of coffee this morning. Contrary to uh, one gentleman's accusations, I neither slurp nor burp. By the way, uh, I, I'm also interested in letting you know I also don't fart because I'm a gentleman. So the Seahawks couldn't find a buyer, and so they release Reed. Now, does he still consider himself a $11 million APY player? Because that's the contract he got a couple years ago. Two years, $23 million. Controversial at the time in Seattle. That's pretty pricey for a defensive tackle, albeit a playmaking one. So if he's thinking, I'm an $11 million player, that's going to be an obstacle in Dallas. And by the way, it might be an obstacle everywhere. Uh, nobody wanted to take on his $8.9 million cap hit. Well, therefore, nobody in the NFL thinks that he's worth whatever you give up in a trade, pick or whatever, plus that salary. So maybe he won't get that anywhere. He surely won't get that in Dallas, I don't think. But he'll get a conversation in Dallas. He'll get an exploration. That's the word that I was told to use. That's the word that indicates where the Cowboys are at. So I'm not going anywhere beyond that. I'm not saying... He Reed's coming to d not doing that. Let somebody else do that. I'm just, let somebody else watch this video and then do that. 
I'm just telling you the Cowboys are involved in an explanation on Reed. He's got the pedigree. Full-time starter for the last four years. Second-round pick out of Alabama in 2016 and needs a job. Dallas needs talent, uh, especially at that spot. You know, uh, uh, it was about, I guess it was a couple months ago, I said, hey, the Cowboys can be okay at defensive tackle, and you guys said, Fish, you're wrong. They need more, and and you're right. I was wrong, you're right. They need more. This guy's more. And I know that a lot of Cowboys critics and fans in Cowboys Nation cringe at this, but it has to be acknowledged. Dallas, just like most other places, they need the right talent. He can be that at the right price. And the, the Cowboys get ripped for the budget thing, but they're all on a budget. And if they weren't, somebody would have already traded for Reed. So, oh, $11 million a year, no big deal to us. It's a big deal to everybody. $182 million cap. So Cowboys Nation is free, that's you, to connect the dots here. I've given you a bunch of the dots. I've also given you the scoop on the Cowboys exploration and what I believe their level of interest to be. And we've got Reed himself tweeting on to the next chapter. Speaking of chapters, uh, we're going to get to 30,000 followers, 30,000 people here uh, on the Fish Sports Channel. We're all in the same club. We're going to get to 30,000 followers very shortly. In addition to giving you the Fish Out t-shirt and giving you the Dallas Cowboys 1990 hoodie for real. Uh, we're giving away this precious gem. And so subscribe. We'll get there faster. Tell your friends to subscribe. Hit the alarm alert buttons. Hit the subscribe buttons. If you want to come into the uh, premium club, you're more than invited to. Uh, we have reached 100, uh, 100 of you in there. We've reached 20,000. That's 26,000 of us out here. And we will be with, you, be with you all weekend long. Free agency movement. Trade stuff. If it's gossip, I will tell you it's gossip. If it's rumor, I will tell you it's rumor. When it comes to these two now, Cowboys and Seahawks stories, I am telling you the straight dope. Fish, out.